Solving inequalities in one variable. Now we're going to use some, uh, some things we're going to use in calculus, some techniques we're going to use in calculus next year. I know we could probably just graph this to see when, when is this, uh, what are we trying to find here? When is this positive or negative or zero? Um, we could probably just graph it and take a look. But ultimately, let's, let's learn a new technique. When was, will this thing equal zero? Well, if this equals zero, what makes, what makes that parenthesis zero, Mr. Preswell? I think negative three. I think negative three. So negative three, we're going to put that on the number line. That causes this to be zero. So negative three is one of the answers. Um, what causes this to be zero? Well, I don't think there's anything. Is no, there? All right. And then how about this one? I think four. Four, because four minus four is zero, zero squared. So these two spots, negative three and four, will cause the thing to be zero. Anywhere in between these two, it's always going to be positive or negative. Okay? It, it, it can't switch in between those two because it's got the zeros on the end. And then again here, anywhere there, it's going to be either positive or negative and anywhere on this interval. So all we have to do is pick numbers in here, here, and here, and plug them in for the x's and see if the thing is positive or negative. So what's the number down here? Well, I'm going to pick like negative 5 because that's a pretty easy number to work with. And then we'll plug negative 5 into each one of these spots. And we'll just tell if it's positive or negative. I don't care what the answer is. Uh, negative 5 in here makes this negative 2. Right? And then negative 5 in here makes this 26. And then negative 5 in here makes this a positive 81. So negative 2 times this times 81 is still going to be a negative number, right? correct? No, so not. down here, on that interval from negative infinity up to negative 3, this thing is going to be negative. All right, now pick a number in between these two, Mr. Criswell. Let's just try zero. Zero, that's a beautiful one. So zero plus three is? Three. Three, okay, let's put a square right here. Three times? One. One times some 16. negative number squared. Yeah, so so, is that what it is? Zero minus four squared. Yeah. 16. So three times one times 16 is a positive number. So we're going to be positive in between negative three and four. So we can write that negative three to four, we're positive. And then pick a number over here, well, probably 5 again. Does that make sense? So let's change. So we're putting 5 in here first, and 5 in here, and 5 in here. So 5 plus 3 is 8, and then 25, that would be 26. And then 5 minus 4 one. is 1 squared. 8 times 26 well, is a positive number again. So we're positive from 4 to infinity. So the answer for positive would be this one, union that one, and negative would be this thing. Cool, Mr. Rizzo? Cool. Cool. All right. Um, how do you want to do this one? I think we want to look at the graph. Yeah, let's cheat and just look at the graph. So what do we want to know? We want to know when is this thing bigger than zero? That's the only thing we're looking for. Not when is it negative, just when is it bigger than zero? So here is the graph of that function, and it's bigger than zero. Well, it's bigger than zero right here, right? Yeah. And it's bigger than zero right here. Right. So whatever those are. Whatever. You know, I honestly, I bet this is like one and a half. So negative two to one and a half. And we could find that by factoring or finding the zeros. We're really quite we could good do at that. One, right. And then from four to infinity, it's also bigger than zero. So yeah. we, we could do that. We could zoom way in. We could actually use the calculator function to find the zeros, that kind of thing, but my calculator's on the fritz today. So if you need help with that, though, please, please, please ask us. We really, that's what they're paying us for. Uh, all right, is this the one we're on now? Yeah, I think we should probably factor this. Okay, you talk, I'll, I'll okay. write. Let's do it algebraically, so let's factor an x out. And then hopefully that x squared minus x minus two is factorable. Okay. X it, times Is that right? Oh, excellent. So now we've got a similar situation as example one, right? Yeah. So let's so do the number line. line. What makes what makes this zero? Zero. All right. And what makes this Two. zero? And what makes this Negative zero? Negative one. All right. And and we could have graphed this and done the same thing, mm -hmm. but well, let's let's practice our new technique. Um, if we pick a number down here and plug it in. For all the x's, uh, are we positive or negative? So if we put a negative two in, we'd have negative two. We'd have negative two times negative four times negative one. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Negative. So that is less than zero. So 
that doesn't. We don't care. We we only want bigger than or equal right. to zero. Right. Okay. Yeah. So no. So that's not going to work. How about let's pick a, a number in between here. All right. So like negative one half. Yep. Does that make sense? So we'll have negative one half times negative two and a half times one half. One half. So negative times negative is positive times a positive is positive. So hey, this is good. We want to keep that part. Yep. All right, and then let's pick a value in between zero and two. One. One, one sounds good. So let's put a one in here. We got one uh, over one times one minus two is negative one times one plus one is two. So positive times a negative times a positive is a negative. negative. So we really don't care about that because yeah. we only want bigger than or equal to zero. So let's pick a number down here. Um, four, does that make sense? Sounds good to me. So we've got four times four minus two is two times five. Positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. Cool. A winner, that's what we want, bigger than or equal to zero. So our answers are gonna be negative one, zero, two, is that right? Mm -hmm. So really, we could say negative one to zero inclusive. Yes. So negative one to zero, the brackets mean including, so inclusive. And then we start here, what, a two, and go forever? Forever. And then two, forever, and we use a parenthesis because you can't really make it to infinity. Hey, function that baby.